Okay, we are live. This is Anna Curley of Wanda Media, chatting with Amar Ibrahim, the product manager for the Middle East and North Africa at Google. Amar, how are you? Very well, thank you. How are you doing? Great. Um, so let's just chat. Can you walk us through the newest developments rolling out in the Middle East at Google? Sure. Um, uh, most recently, um, we have launched um, Google Maps with um, uh, beta navigation um, in uh, nine countries in the Middle East and North Africa. And um, uh, basically, this is a, um, uh, you can think of it as a GPS navigation system um, uh, built from ground up to be an online navigation system when people basically drive. So this is sort of revolutionary in this part of the world. Um, I know you're launching an element called road traffic. Can you describe that to us? Sure. Um, so, so let me tell you the first part why it's revolutionary, and then I can speak maybe a little bit about road traffic. So there are, I think, um, three main contributing factors to um, why we think this is um, uh, um, great for our users. So um, the first one is the ease of use. So um, uh, you can speak. Um, to your navigation device in Arabic or English, and Arabic, our system understands many dialects. So you can speak either the address or you can speak the landmark if you don't know the address. So you can say um, uh, Dubai International Airport. You don't need to know the address, and um, the navigation will take you there. Um, the, th the second thing is um, uh, freshness. Every time you um, launch it, we serve you the <coughs> Um, uh, most updated map, uh, rather than having to update your navigation um, uh, system. The third thing is that it's free. Um, uh, so you, you mentioned traffic. We were very, very happy that we had our first set of launches, um, I believe, in October um, uh, for Jeddah and uh, Kuwait City. So what traffic is, is it shows you um, how how much traffic there is on, on certain roads. So this will um, give the drivers the ability to determine the best route um, in rush hours, say, and it can give you also a time estimate on getting from um, point A to point B. I mean, I, I, I always think of Cairo when I say this, right? Um, when you ask people how, how, much, how much time is going to take me to go from, you know, somewhere to another place, um, they tell you it depends. With traffic, it could take you two hours. No traffic could take you 10 minutes, right? So what we're trying to do is to answer um, that part um, in real time. It sounds incredibly useful, especially here, where so many places are just described by their landmarks. And um, you never know how, how much tra the traffic is going to delay you. Um, how do you actually, can you speak at all to how you estimate the traffic delays? Well, I mean, it's it's uh, based on uh, many things. So when when we when we take you know the route calculation, we take into consideration um, speed limits, um, uh, you know, like m many many things that you would naturally take consider. And then we have um, I think about four or five grades of traffic. So we can say it's pretty open or it's dead traffic. So um, uh, this is. I mean, this, this, like there's a formula that takes all these things into consideration. And you have staff on the ground that are determining that? Um, we have many ways that we collect data. And um, uh, I mean, having staff on the ground, I, as, as far as I believe, is not one of them. Uh, when will you expand this to the rest of the region? Um, so, I mean, with like with any of our mobile products or any products, we try to get it in everywhere, in every language, in every dialect as fast as we can. So um, uh, um, we will definitely, um, uh, you know, um, share 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 the news once we um, uh, have any any plans for for any other cities. We we usually try not to launch um, before we have. Um, proper coverage and good quality for our road traffic. So, whenever we find, um, uh, you know, that uh, we can offer something useful to our users, we do it as fast as we can in everywhere. Great. And you also recently activated turn-by-turn -turn navigation in Arabic. I guess you you touched upon that. Um, which other Google apps are going to get an update 
with uh, with Google Voice and Arabic. Um, so I mean, I mean, as you um, uh, you know probably know, um, we have many Arabic products, right? Um, uh, most of our products have Arabic UIs, and most recently, Jelly Bean Android has also um, uh, Arabic support, and you can speak in any um, uh, keyboard um, uh, input and use the native functionality. Um, uh, you know, um, uh, we're, we're trying to match the growing number of our users in the region and, uh, you know, we're trying to, as fast as we can, to launch it in Arabic from day one. So um, I guess, you know, the answer is we're trying as fast as we can to cover also more dialects. I also just have to chat about, you know, what happened on the iPhone recently. Um, so Apple recently replaced Google Maps with Apple Maps in iOS 6, and it caused a big uproar because it just, you know, it wasn't up to par with Google. Uh, it seems like Apple overestimated the difficulty of building a good map. What's so hard about it? Well, I mean, I mean, as you can probably tell, I cannot speak on behalf of Apple, but I can tell you, um, you know, that we at Google, we've been working on maps for, you know, um, probably 14 years, and we've been leading the way. Um, we're very proud for um, uh, where we have become in terms of comprehensiveness, ac um, accuracy, usability, um, the global, like how global the product is. And, you know, we try to get the best usable um, uh, products and the best user experience. That's always our goal. And, you know, we understand that maps are um, things that we cannot, like, build entirely on our own. This is why we have thousands of um, user gener like, user like citizens um, that we call, you know, um, uh, cartographers that are contributing to Google Maps via MapMaker. And this has also helped us tremendously to get um, coverage in places where it's very hard to get any access to any data. Um, uh, yeah, so, so it's, it's been a very long time that we've been working on this, and we're, we're still trying to um, improve. Is there any chance that Google will be interested in acquiring startups in the Middle East and North Africa? And if so, what types? Well, I mean, unfortunately, I mean, this is something I probably, I mean, I cannot comment on. So, um, uh, I mean, I, I am not aware of, of, of any plans, but I mean, we're always looking to acquire a great technology and great talent anywhere in the world. Are there any more juicy updates coming up with Google that you'd like to share with us? Um, well, I can tell you um, that um, we have launched um, city targeting very recently um, in um, Dubai and Abu Dhabi. So now our advertisers are able to target even cities within um, the United Arab Emirates. Um, we're extremely happy about this um, uh, update and this, you know, um, unique targeting capability that we're offering um, to our users. We've also launched offline maps in Egypt. Um, so uh, you can cache um, uh, a map and use, you know, um, use the map on your Android device without um, having access to the internet. Uh, save a lot of uh, data costs, especially if you're, if you're roaming. It sounds very useful for Egypt. Amar, thanks for sharing all of these updates with us. Um, look forward to seeing them roll out in the rest of the Middle East as well, especially here in Lebanon. Thank you very much. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Take care.